Hey calculus class, today we are going to learn topic 18, the derivatives of trig and inverse trig functions. All right, some stuff that you need to know about trig, cold, which means this stuff should be memorized from math analysis. The Pythagorean identities, sine squared x plus cosine squared x equals one, 1 plus tangent squared x equals secant squared x. 1 plus cotangent squared x equals cosecant squared x. The double angle formulas. Sine 2x equals 2 times sine x times cosine x. Cosine 2x, and it has three options, cosine squared x minus sine squared x, or 2 times cosine squared x minus 1, or 1 minus 2 sine squared x. Also tangent 2x, which equals 2 tangent x all over 1 minus tangent squared x. The other formulas may appear, but not very often. These are the ones that will always appear. And when I mean appear, I mean on the AP test. And of course, you must always know the unit circle and or the trig angle chart. You must have those values down pat. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and give you the derivatives of the trig functions. And we did the derivative of sine x on your graded assignment through using the definition of a derivative. And of course, all these ones are derived that way as well but I will not make you do it all by hand. <clears throat> so from the graded assignment, you should remember that the derivative of sine is cosine. The derivative of cosine is negative sine x. Derivative of tangent x is secant squared x. Derivative of cosecant x is negative cosecant x times cotangent x. Derivative of secant is secant times tangent. And the derivative of cotangent is negative cosecant squared x. And the best way for these is just to memorize them. However you can memorize them, memorize them. Now you got the derivatives of the inverse trig functions. <clears throat> so the derivative of sine inverse x is one over the square root, one minus x squared. Derivative of cosine inverse x is negative one over the square root of one minus x squared. The derivative of tangent inverse x is one over one plus x squared. The derivative of cosecant inverse x is negative one all over the absolute value of x times the square root of x squared minus one. Derivative of secant inverse x is one over the absolute value of the square root x squared minus one. Derivative of cotangent inverse x is negative one over one plus x squared. Yes, these are ones you definitely need to have memorized as well. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and use our derivative rules with the trig function rules. So for this example one, we're gonna find the derivative of the function tangent x minus one all over secant x. So in order to find this derivative, you do need to use the quotient rule. So. After using the quotient rule and our derivative function, derivatives of the trig functions, so the derivative of the top, so the derivative of tangent is secant squared x, derivative of negative one is just zero, times the bottom, minus the top, times the derivative of the bottom, the derivative of secant is secant times tangent, all over the bottom squared. Now I'm going to simplify. So I know that secant squared times secant, it's secant cubed. And I can distribute the secant x tangent x. 
then I can go ahead and distribute the negative through and look for anything else I can factor out. The top has a secant, so I can factor out the secant. Now using those Pythagorean identities to help us simplify, you should notice that secant squared x is the same thing as one plus tangent squared x. So I can replace the secant squared x with one plus tangent squared x so that now I have stuff that I can cancel. The tangent squareds cancel. So does the secant and one of them on the bottom. So I'm now left with one plus tangent x all over secant x. Now, of course, this is an answer, but it is possible this can be simplified even more. Well, we can break it up into two fractions, one over secant x plus tangent over secant. When we do that, one over secant becomes cosine. Tangent x over secant x, well, tangent x is sine over cosine, and one over secant is just cosine. So now I can cancel these lovely cosines to get cosine x plus sine x. All right, <clears throat> I want you to see if you can do example two on your own using the quotient rule. And try example three, and you have to use the chain rule. So there's my hint to you. So go ahead and press pause. All right, let's see how we did. All right, quotient rule. Derivative of the top, so derivative of cosine is negative sine x times the bottom, minus the top cosine, times the derivative of the bottom, so derivative of two is zero, derivative of sine is cosine, all over the bottom squared. So now I'm gonna simplify, distribute the negative sine through, and I have cosine times cosine. And I can go ahead and pull out a negative sign from the top to get the following. And we should notice something very similar here Sine squared x plus cosine squared x gives you one. So now we have two times sine x plus one, all times a negative, all over two plus sine x quantity squared. Go ahead and leave it just like that. All right, for example three, in order to use the chain rule, you have to identify your outer and inner function. It might be easier to rewrite sine squared x as sine x all squared. <clears throat> so now you should be able to identify your inner function and your outer function. So the inner is sine x, your outer is u squared. Take the derivative of sine x gives me cosine x. Derivative of u squared gives me 2u. Multiply them together and replace u with sine x. So now I have 2 sine x cosine x. And you should notice that that's one of your identities. It is the double angle for sine, so sine 2x. All right, let's try two more. Go ahead and pause and see if you can figure out these ones. All right, let's see how we did. On example four, we have chain rule times two. So it might be better to rewrite it as tangent 3x all squared. So you should notice your inner inner, your inner, and your outer function. So your inner inner v is 3x, your inner function is tangent v, and your outer function is u squared. So now I'm going to go ahead and take the derivative of each. Derivative of 3x is 3. Derivative of tangent is secant squared and the derivative of u squared is 2u. Multiply them all together, and at the same time, I plugged in what needed to be plugged in, so it was in terms of x. So I replaced the secant squared v, so I replaced the v with the 3x, right here. Two times u, well, u is tangent v, which is tangent 3x, and this two, multiplied with the three to give me six. On the example five, you have to use the product rule, and as you're using the product rule, you'll have to use the chain rule 
to find the derivative of the second function. So derivative of the first function, so the derivative of 3x is 3 times the second function, which is sine 4x, plus the first function, 3x, times the derivative of sine 4x. You have to use the chain rule. The inner function is 4x. Derivative of 4x is 4. Your outer function is sine, so the derivative of sine is cosine. And then it says in terms of the inner function. Go ahead and simplify. So I now have 3 sine 4x plus 12x cosine 4x. And that's pretty much all you can do unless you want to factor out a 3. Now let's try these ones. This one, you will have to use implicit differentiation. So go ahead and try it. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and take the derivative of sine xy squared first. So I'm gonna have to use the chain rule. My inner function is x times u squared. My outer function is sine u. Now when I take the derivative with respect to x of the inner function, I'm gonna have to use the product rule along with implicit differentiation. So the derivative of x is one times the second function is y squared plus the first function x times the derivative of y squared, which is two y, all, all times dy dx. Derivative of the outer function is cosine. So now I can go ahead and take the derivative of the actual function. Derivative of one is zero. Derivative of x is one. And the derivative of the right-hand side is my inner function times my outer function, cosine, in terms of the inner function. Now I have to solve for dy dx. So, you're going to want to distribute the cosine through, get the term without the dy dx to the other side, divide by the term that is with the, the dy dx, so that your final answer is 1 minus y squared times cosine xy squared all over 2xy cosine xy squared. All right, down here, you're going to have to use the chain rule as well. My inner function is tangent inverse. My outer function is the square root of u. Derivative of tangent inverse is one over one plus x squared. Derivative of the square root is one over two square root u. Now I'm gonna go ahead and multiply them together and replace u with the inner function to get the following. All right. Example eight and nine, go ahead and try these. Remember that when you see arc and then a trig, that's the same thing as sine inverse. All right, <clears throat> we have to use the product rule here. So, and the chain rule. So the derivative of the first function. So the derivative of the inner, which is one minus x squared, is negative two x times the derivative of the square root function, which is one over two times the square root of the inner times the second function plus the first function times the derivative of the second function and the derivative of sine inverse is one over the square root one minus x squared. Go ahead and simplify, cancel out those twos cancel out those square roots, and I'm left with the following. For example nine, we're well, gonna have to use the chain rule. My inner function is six x plus five. My outer function is cosine inverse. Derivative of six x plus five is six. Derivative of cosine inverse is negative one over the square root of one minus u squared. Now when I multiply them together, I have my inner function times my outer function. And notice that I have to replace u with my inner function, which was six x plus five. 
wanted to, you could expand the bottom, but there's nothing else you can really do. So you are done. All right, now we're going to write the equation of a tangent line on the given curve at the given point. So just like before, when you want the equation of a tangent line, you need the slope of the tangent line, which tells you to take the derivative. So we need to take the derivative of our function. So I'm gonna to have to use the product rule. So the derivative of the first term, which is e to the x, is e to the x, times the second, minus the first term, times the derivative of the second, which is cosine. And the reason why it became minus was because the derivative of cosine is negative sine. Now I'm gonna go ahead and find the slope. So I'm gonna plug in zero for x to find the value of the slope. e to the zero is just one. Cosine zero is one and sine zero is zero. So that means your slope is one. And I already have my point so that means I can write my equation. All right, example 11. Find the x-coordinates of all points on the curve y equals sine 2x minus 2 sine x at which the tangent line is horizontal. So that means we want to find where the tangent line has a slope of zero. So we need to find the derivative and set the derivative equal to zero. All right, so when I take the derivative of this, I'm gonna to have to t use the chain rule for this term. So the inner function is 2x, so the derivative of 2x is two, times the derivative of the outer, which is sine. The derivative of sine is cosine of the inner function, minus the derivative of two sine x, which is just two cosine x. I'm gonna set this equal to zero. I can go ahead and factor out a two and cancel that out because it doesn't matter. And we know that cosine two x is the same thing as two cosine squared x minus one. And I'm going to rewrite this so that this is, looks more like a quadratic format. So this could be read as the same thing as two whatever squared minus whatever, minus one. So I'm gonna factor this just like any quadratic, but instead of just using x, I'm gonna use cosine. So when you factor, you should get two cosine x plus one times cosine x minus one, and set each factor equal to zero, and I'm gonna solve each one. So for the first one, I get that cosine x equals negative one over two, for the second one, I get cosine x equals one. So now I have to figure out, all right, what angles give me a cosine of negative one half? And this is where you want to have your unit circle memorized. And you should have that cosine is negative one half every time x is two pi over three plus two pi in. And the reason why I have to include the two pi in is because I do not have an interval. It says find x coordinates of all points. If it gave me an interval, then I would not have to do this. There is another x value on the unit circle where cosine is negative one half, which is four pi over three plus two pi in. Now I'm gonna go ahead and find the x values for when cosine is one, and that would be at zero plus two pi in, and I'm done. So the reason why I did not find the y values is because it does not ask me to find the points. It's just asking the x coordinates of the points. All right, I hope you enjoyed learning the trig and I will see you in class tomorrow. Have a good night.